All right, guys, we're back today on a nice rainy day, and we're going to utilize this day to build this perfect pass car. Got a lot of nice perfect pass parts. We'll go over all of them, and uh, we'll get this thing started, see what we can do with it, make some decisions on motor and a few other things, and uh, get this thing out to the airstrip as soon as we can. Let me get this camera set up on a stand, and uh, we'll get started. All right, let's see what, we can go, what we're looking at here. Um, I think everybody knows I don't do a whole lot of editing. I'm just doing a video to show what I'm gonna, you know, what I do to to set my cars up, and I'm just doing it with a perfect pass setup this time, um, with the perfect pass chassis. We'll go over these parts as we go to, but um, obviously, first and foremost is this new perfect pass carbon chassis. Um, Ross Sheffern and Perfect Pass did one nice job with this thing, man. This thing is really good. It looks sweet. It's, you know, I'm not into the glossy carbon, but I do like this thing. It looks really good. Um, Want to note that this thing accepts V1, V2, and actually some other stuff. I would say that uh, um, it's pretty much got it all covered. I'm sure there's something that it doesn't fit, but um, that pretty much covers everything that most people are going to be running um also comes with some aero plates so you got chassis and aero plates now some of the other things that we have is we've got some of the new perfect pass heavy springs we also have the new v3 perfect pass carbon shafts we're going to use in this thing which come with a spool and their own cups, spacers, all the stuff you need to make that work. Um, got a full perfect past um, carbon kit, which we won't be using all of that because we are going to do a GT car. So a couple of those things don't really apply with the side plates and whatnot, but um, it's nice to have them. We do have a perfect pass wing, the new wing he's got. Um, and we'll make some decisions on what we're going to run and how we're going to run it as we move along. Um, next thing, perfect pass servo. Really nice servo. I have that thing. I have those in a couple of other cars. Um, I really like those. Um, perfect pass body mounts. That's a good sets that something to support that body, especially those FC bodies out on the edges. I uh, have. Some perfect pass QS8s along with everything else so pretty much just about got everything that uh that Roz makes currently you know with perfect pass um for this application so we're going to try to put together a car um make some decisions on on the motor and get it out on the runway and see what we can do with it uh with a full carbon uh perfect pass build um, I did disassemble the Limitless. Uh, I think some people remember the V2 Limitless that I did a video on. Um, I went ahead and just kind of pre-disassembled some of that car. There's a, never really ran it a whole lot. You know, obviously we're not going to use the battery trays because this uh, new chassis has got slots in it. I very rarely, if ever, use the ESE tray or the factory uh, receiver box or anything. I don't really even like running a receiver box. Um, and of course we ran the 4070 in that car, which we'll do something different for this obviously. And uh, so I went ahead and took some of this apart just to get a little bit ahead of it. You know, I did the setup on that, that uh, V2. So I'm just gonna kinda go through some of that, but you know, some of it, you might wanna refer back to that V2 video. Um, to get a little more detail i'll try to get as much detail as i can in it um and then uh you know we can uh kind of see how it goes and we'll go from there one of the big decisions i got to make and i'll probably go with a single motor to start with um got a pps mount for for single um obviously the scorch mount for a dual um they both make duels, they both make singles, and I like both the companies and their products are, are just spot on. So 
we're gonna make some decisions on whether to run a single or a dual and we may start out with a single and move to a dual um also scorched servo mount because this chassis is drilled for a standalone servo mount which is what i like i like to have it where i can uh uh, not have that box and all that other stuff in the way and obviously with this chassis being cut for running the batteries to the outside um that whole box would really get in the way in the way i like to set cars up uh, i've had a few people ask me if i were going to was going to use these slots to to run my batteries tie downs with and i am um i don't really see any problem with with battery straps coming through at the bottom just a little um one thing i do recommend is some of these kevlar battery straps um super strong the carbon won't uh eat into these they got metal buckles on them there's several companies out there that make them uh in different lengths uh they work really good um and it helps keep those batteries in the cars you know these these batteries cost a lot and you certainly don't want to be ejecting them and uh if you speed run we all know what's going to happen sooner or later it's just an inevitability um so try to keep that stuff in the car and keep it all together but what i'm going to do is you know we got a couple of different things that we got to do and try to get everything on the car and then we'll have to go back through because once you get everything on the car um you know the the ride height is probably the last thing that you're going to do and the way i do my ride height um it has to be the last thing that happens you know so i'll kind of show you a little bit about what i do to the shocks because these are already done on this car i do have to change the springs out to the new uh perfect pass springs but they're already done um but I'm going to go over the shocks with everybody and I'll go over the dips because like I say, that car is already done. So we're just going to touch base on that stuff again. And we're going to try to put this car together a little by little. I don't do a lot of editing, so we'll just do it my way. And I hope you enjoy and then we'll get this thing out and we'll get some passes with it. Um, hopefully within the next few weeks, we'll have, uh, have some opportunity to go out and get some more passes in. So, we're going to unpack some of this per carbon stuff and we're going to start putting some stuff together and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I jumped ahead a good bit. Wanted to uh, just kind of speed things up. So first thing I did, steering arms, put the perfect pass carbon steering arms on there. Also put the Ackerman arm. When I put the Ackerman on him, I Ackerman arm in. That's a hard one to say sometimes. Um, I did use some of the scorched uh, bearings to go in these positions here. Um, really super smooth. I like those. And if I'm in that deep, might as well go ahead and put something in there to to smooth up the steering even more. I'll also put these bearings in instead of the brass bushings that come with them um brass bushings work fine i've left them in a lot of cars but i'm in here i might as well just go ahead and do these uh bearings in there to smooth things up a little bit and uh we're gonna just continue on one of the things that you know why i'm in here and i've got this wide open access i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this factory cup um and get it out of here Obviously, we don't need that. Uh, we have the new cup. It has two uh, set screws in it. Um, I know you don't see it out on the table, uh, Loctite, but I, uh, instead of picking up a bottle of Loctite for every little screw, I, uh, I tend to just put a little Loctite on a piece of plastic. Um, it's not going to dry, so... And I can just dab the screws in as I go. I don't have to worry about back and forth trying to pick a bottle up every time. Makes it a lot quicker. It's a lot easier to deal with. Um, and this is a good time to put these cups on for a couple of reasons. One, I can make sure that my pinion um, is seated. 
uh, completely and uh, get this thing here I'm gonna tighten it down on the flat first obviously and then I'll tighten up the secondary nice and smooth we do have some more stuff to put on here um, obviously the top plate we'll get that on but we're gonna before we put the top plate on um, I'm gonna change out the shock tower because we do have a new perfect pass carbon shock tower uh, in the kit so we're gonna change it out and then move on and do the top plate and we'll have this assembly pretty much done until we get it on the car and do the final ride height um, like I say, I want to get the whole car built before I actually adjust my shocks to get this ride height right. Um, and when you see how I do them, you'll understand why I don't use uh, droop screws because that's really just not what they're made for. Uh, ride height does not droop. Droop is a completely different thing. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the shock tower in. We already have the Ackerman arm in. We got the steering uh, brackets put on, so we're gonna get this uh, shock tower on, and then we can move and do the rear, um, and then we can start putting some of this stuff on the car and getting some things done, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're back again. All right, guys, look here. Obviously, we put the cup on on the last one. We got the Ackerman arm in, and we got the top plate on carbon shock tower the end plates as i said before on the ackerman arm i use these scorched uh, bearings instead of those little bushings i also put bearings in the steering pins it just makes this just glassy smooth and going along with that perfect pass servo um this thing's gonna just it's going to do exactly what you want it to do. It's going to steer how you want it to. It's going to work really good. On the, the shims, obviously I don't have them in here yet. Um, and I just wanted to show how this thing moves. I actually run mine to the front. I run all of the shims in the back. Um, it's just a caster setting. And this car's got so much caster in it too. And with the kick up in it, um, I have the best luck. And have always just ran mine in the back and been done with it. You know, uh, you adding some, you're adding some caster when you put them all in the front. And for a car that has so much anyway, I just think it's unnecessary. Um, does well. Everything works good that way. So that's the way I like to run mine. You know, I'm kind of skipping through a lot of this stuff because there's so many videos and it's really not that difficult. Most anybody that has that, that playing with these cars and doing what we do already have the basics and they know how to take screws out and put carbon parts on or whatever parts they want to run. And, uh, so we're just kind of skipping over that part. Again, the shocks were set up when I had it on the V2 open wheel. When I did that, uh, video, um, and you can watch that video as well. I will show what I do to set my ride height but we're not going to actually set it until we get this car put together um when i take these shocks apart you know obviously i drain them and do all that and get everything out of the way and i bring this out you know if this factory these shocks are really long you know that the car sits kind of high and we're always trying to lower our cars so what i do is i actually use these bushings Depending on the car, you may want to run one, you may run two. There's a couple of different thicknesses out there. Um, this is actually the ones that I use the most, these 832s, just flat nylon washers. Um, they work really well. But every time you put one of those in there, you shorten the shaft up, therefore lowering the car. And if you get your ride height thread, you know, set up like that, you don't need to use droop screws. You know, maybe for a really super fine, you know, a little bit of adjustment or um, use them to take the slop out that you have 
these things always tend to have a little bit of wiggle up and down in them um, because of the shock uh, ends. Uh, you can take that slop out with the droop screws, but droop screws are not made to hold the pressure of a spring to set your ride height. What usually happens when you do that is you have a, a screw that's so far on the inside and you have a shock that's pushing so far on the outside. So your arm does this. So it's so inconsistent at that point over time, that arm's going to bend more and more. You leave this car in your car all day long in the heat. It gets 130 degrees. You go where you're going to run and all the time it's just continuously bowing up more. So if you set the shock with those bushings at the height that you want, now it's out here. You've not used that droop screw as a right height adjuster because it's just not what a droop screw is made for anyway. So bring it in here. You've adjusted this length. So when you did that, you put this point out here. This is very unlikely to do any kind of bending, but that little screw in there holding the tension of these heavy springs that we're running, you know, the Roz uh, Perfect Pass springs are even more, uh, they're considerably bigger. They're a lot stronger than what these factory V2 springs were. Um, and again, we'll show some more about the other things that I do with the shocks, but I just kind of want to go over that because we had all this out and it's easier to see. Um, I set all my cars up using bushings and the shocks. It's so much easier. It takes more time, but then once it's set, you don't have to readjust it because the arms aren't bowing up over time. The more those arms bow, the more you're trying to put more tension on your droop screw and you're completely just ruining the droop screw. You don't, there's no reason to even try to use it as a, a ride height adjuster because it just doesn't work. Um, it cannot hold the, the tension of those springs. Um, this is a problem in the front, the rear. Um, I tend to run my springs and we'll talk about that. I run my shocks, I mean, at full length in the rear to give my car the rake that I like. Um, it works out fine. And you know, some of your ride height is dictated a hundred percent by the tires that you're running. So, you know, that kind of works out that way. But what we're going to do now is now that we have this front already, um, the diff has already been done in this car, but what I usually do is take these, these apart. You know, you take them apart when you first get them, you go through them, um, four screws. It's pretty quick. And you know, if it's a brand new car, I just simply turn them over on a rag and just let them drain. There's no scent there. I don't see any need to, to completely take them out and wash all that out. Cause there's really almost nothing in them anyway. And, uh, I run 500 K in the front and two to 300 in the back. Um, I've ran that since I started doing this, every car I got that way with the exception of a couple of cars that I have scorched spools in. Um, they, uh, and those are in the, the newer scorch builds that I've done. And uh, so I'm testing those. But open diffs, um, I think they work better for me, depending on where I'm at. Uh, obviously, out on the runway, we got a whole lot better uh, situation out there than we did on my little two-lane private road that was critical. You know, you needed to have everything set just right. You know, my car's always pulled to, a, to the center on my two-lane road because that road had such a crown in it the runway obviously doesn't have all that um so it's a different different setup but anyway i don't want to go through every little thing on this 500 front two to 300 in the rear is what i run i also make sure that the mesh is correct um very seldom but sometimes you may have to add a shim under the pinion or you may add a shim to one side or the other of your diff just to make sure that that is correct um, you know, you want a little bit of play in there enough to, to give it some movement room, but obviously if it's really sloppy, but we just, I don't run into that very often. Um, so I basically run my diffs stock that they're the way they came. I just changed the fluid. All the other stuff is the same. Um, I don't have any problems with them, so I just leave them. And that's the bit way it's been since I started. Um, I'll get this, uh, rear over here. We got to change out. A few things on it um now that the front's out of the way obviously on the rear it was a limitless so we're going to take these motor mounts off 
we're going to take uh, the shocks and redo them when we get the car together for the ride height. Um, got to change the cup out and put the carbon um, shock tower on. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that. And um, it'll snap right back here in just a minute. And we'll get every, go over everything again. Not using the diff brace. You know, this is gone just like the front. These are these shafts are 12 millimeters. You can see where the original perfect pass, the 10 millimeters for the rear brace, you have to groove this out, enlarge it. Um, with a carbon chassis, carbon top brace, all that, you don't need those diff braces anymore. Um, with the aluminum chassis, I left this one and grooved it out. With the carbon chassis, I completely just take it out and I take the rear out and I mean the rear and the front and just eliminate them all together I generally make me a spacer to fit in here just to hold this nice because I am going to have a body mount mounted on it all right so we'll uh cut off for a second get this done and we'll be right back all right we got some of this rear done now got this nice carbon shock tower in here um we do need to Swap out this cup, get it out of the way. Again, I like to do them now because I can verify that my pinion is still in the correct position. My input gear. Um, again, I also locked out all these two. I just went ahead and put some Loctite on before I put them in. I like to stay ahead of things um of course we took off the the body mounts because we're not going to use them two shock towers acron arm steering arms top plate and discs and with that and of course the two which i only have one here um that is pretty much what we're getting rid of of the actual running stuff of this car you know where these cars come as rollers so we're not using the motor mount um and mainly the reason i'm not using the motor mount <coughs> is it's a v2 and i'm gonna run v1 shafts um but the amount of adjustability with motor and gearing with the stock motor mount um on the v2 is just not suitable for what i like to run um it's just has some spacing issues you know if you run the stock 39 gear you got to run a 33 34 tooth pinion just to mash up um so those numbers don't work that's the reason you know i run the scorch and i run the pps mounts um again both of those are top notch um love them both always use them um been using them since they since they started and uh but as a whole this car, stock arms, stock diffs, stock shocks, um, stock hubs. I'm going to try to keep it as close to stock, but it's still making it a GT. And obviously we're adding stuff to it. Um, but I would consider this still an Arma. It's not just a, you know, it, it's kind of give and take. Some people think that it's just not quiet because we added so much. But I still consider it a, as an Arma limitless Um because it's limitless you know it's made to take what you get and make it into what you want but anyway um still got to make a spacer for here not really necessary um but i like to have it just to where it'll be uh, stationary and uh we got the diff cup changed um i got one axle that i'm gonna have to fix real quick because i didn't even notice i let it fall out but we'll take care of that and uh get this thing back together um and then uh, we can actually start putting some of this stuff on the car and getting uh, this car, uh, basically get it set up, start getting some things in it, get the, uh, to make some decisions at some point, probably not today, um, on what motor I'm gonna run in it. I would say uh, if I run a single motor, I'll probably do a uh, either a, 4070, 4080, or, uh, you know, maybe a fifth scale motor. I don't know. Um, 
and that's probably where we'll start at just pick one of those and and start on it and go from there and uh get that shaft back in i do run the the stock shafts i don't have any problems with them um you can put cvds in the rear some people put spacers in them um you can do that as well you know put a spacer a small piece of fuel tubing in here to hold the shafts in um and i may do that depending on how everything lays out when i get toward that end but most of the time i just run them the way they are um, so we're gonna get a couple things done here get everything set up when you start putting these things on and then we can put a motor mount on and start getting a center drive line in and uh move to the next parts all right got this chassis over here these are some of the simplest cars to work on everything comes off in units so it's a lot easier to deal with um you could actually take this whole thing apart and put it on this chassis uh, in just a few minutes and swap it over um so it wouldn't uh wouldn't take long if you were just doing that if you already had a car that's set up you could uh have this thing swapped over in just a short period of time and be out running in no time and i'm uh run these in try not to run them in all the way with that tool because you know we are dealing with plastic so i like to put a hand on it so i know exactly where it's at same thing with the front super easy i'm uh everything fits exactly as it should with this chassis um which is great because you don't have any any alignment issues um everything seems to bolt straight up without any problem at all so we'll get all these uh put on try not to get ahead of myself with anything Again, you know, I like to, especially some of them, uh, they're, uh, usually pretty easy. Like I say, this thing could be done in no time. You could have this car put together in just a few minutes. Um, swap out this bit and uh, get these other screws here. Get everything put together. I mean, this is. Um, Obviously, we all know how to do this part. We've probably most of you done it a hundred times, especially with these cars. But that was a uh, just a couple of minutes. So now we got a car that's getting close. You know, it's starting to look like a car already. Um, we've got to put together the spool, and I think. What I'm going to do is do a V1 and run it in the, or run it like a V1 because that's what I like. Um, I think this car will be well suited for this. Obviously the short shaft in the front, long shaft in the rear. Got those extra pins with these perfect pass V3 carbon shafts. Got this spool, solid eight millimeter. Uh, it's got two flats on it. Hope you can see that stuff in the camera. It's hard to see some of this in a camera. Lots of spacers um, to get that gear just right. Once I decide on which motor it is, I'll put a gear on it. What I'm going to do today is just put it together, and I'll probably just slide a gear in just to hold it in place. Um, once I decide what motor that I'm going to run, 
I'll go back and and put the the proper gear for that on and we'll go from there what I'm gonna do now is get this motor mount on and put this spool together and let's try to start getting that part in and uh, we'll move from there all right guys got this spool built double double screws double set screws at the shims um, so I usually put a shim here so it keeps it from rubbing on the outside race of that bearing and uh, went together really easy no big problems at all we can get this uh, B3 setup dropped in here oh yeah that feels good there so we're gonna and like I say I just put a gear on here I put a 34 on here just to have something on it um, I doubt very seriously that that's the gear that I'll be running in it but we're gonna just kind of put it together um, and when we make a determination on the motor then we can uh, decide on the gearing obviously if you go if I go with a fifth scale motor it's going to be a lot different than if we went with a 4070 or a 4080. Um, Roz did mention in his video today that uh, you know that the you know the dog bone shafts, especially in the front, do have a inherent problem with that pin wear. Um, and uh, you know it's just kind of one of those things that we got to deal with. Um, so we're going to put it in there and we're going to run it and you know if we need to to change over to the trident shaft obviously we will because i would like to see the car just see how fast it will go not just stop at you know 180 or 190 obviously you, everybody knows that i'm not much on stopping for anything i want to continue on um but now what we have is we have this thing together and we're not far off from uh from doing the final assembly really you know we're gonna get a steering servo in of course got to put the front and the rear on got some carbon uh, pieces for that um, got the perfect past perfect pass uh, servo to put in and uh, we can get the car all set up and get get everything in it and get the ride hot set the way I was talking about we'll go over that again um, in video two um, what I'm going to do now is try to get the servo in, just kind of get that in place, and that'll be about as far as we go today. You know, I'll make a part two because I'm going to do the springs and all that, but I want to do it once the car is completely assembled with the motor, some batteries, and get my ride height to where I want it to be. I'll put the springs on, and I'll do those bushings in the front shocks as I showed you. Um, any bumpers that I need to do in the rear to... Um, of course with the new springs, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to check it out and see and We'll get the last of this thing put together and uh, I think it'll be a, a really cool build. We're gonna take it out to the strip on um, the airstrip and run it Again, I want to thank Roz At perfect pass this thing is really gonna be this is gonna be a cool build guys um, Everything went together nicely uh, All the holes line up, which is great um shafts went straight in so we're good there uh i'm gonna go ahead and get this uh this servo in and that's probably about as far as i'll go in this video and then we'll do part two uh sorry the first video is so long um because i just kind of wanted to go over everything that we were doing uh again we're gonna have the new perfect pass body mounts which it'll probably be like this for me um which is nice because it'll set that uh, support way out on the body so the body's not sagging over the body mount. Same thing in the front, get everything done. I run my front a little bit different, so we'll see how that works out. And uh, we got a good long way. Got a few things we got to do yet, and we'll do all that some more in video two. Um, this is already probably over 30 something minutes long, which is a long video for me. Um, I don't do any editing, so. This is as raw as it gets, guys. And, you know, that's the way I like to keep it. I, you know, I'm an in-the-road guy. I don't care what the, 
what the test shows, what this shows, what that shows. Let's put it in the road and see what it does. And if it'll prove itself in the road, that's when it's that's when it's approved. That's when I like it. That's when I want to push it and 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 show what it can do. Um, still got to decide on what body to run. There's a lot of things to decide, but we can do some of that. If you got some suggestions, you know, body wise. Uh, motor wise, you know, put it in the comments. Let's see what we can do. Come up with something. I want this to be something that everybody gets to be a part of. You're going to know what's in it from start to finish. We're going to run it. We're going to see what it does. And I'm going to push it as hard as I can push it. And we'll push the single motor as far as it'll go. And then we'll, we'll see if we can't cram a duel in here. Cause I think there's plenty of space. Um, the way I set my cars up, I think I can squeeze a duel in here and make it work. So we're going to do that. And, um, we're gonna see what we can do. I may have to reconfigure how the batteries sit, but um, everybody has a their own layout that they like. Obviously I do. And uh, hope you enjoyed the first part. Looking forward to the rest of it. Got a lot more stuff to do. Um, I'll probably put that servo mount together and get it in um, before the next video. And we'll uh, get some more stuff done and we'll go from there. Um, I hope y'all enjoy and y'all keep watching. We'll get this thing posted up and part two will be up. Um, we'll do it and have it up in a few days and then there'll probably be a part three and then there's going to be a run, you know, it'd be time to start running this thing and you know, we'll run it with the, the way it is, uh, with a single and then we'll switch it over and make some more runs with a, with a duo on the next trip out. Um, hope y'all enjoy looking forward to it perfect pass um from start to finish we're doing doing it all we're going to try to get everything that perfect pass does um thanks again to ross sheffern uh for uh helping me out with this perfect pass build and you know we're gonna make something really cool y'all enjoy and we'll uh see you on the next video thanks for watching guys and thanks for putting up with me talking so much over the last 30 minutes or so Y'all have a good day.